can I can I can give a line? Let's see. Let me think of a good one. Um, do, do, do. And, and give us your favorite. I, I gotta think if I can remember any of the lines. It's not this. It was the last shoot where I was in the pub. So. <laughs> well, uh, again on the battlefield when I'm when I'm shouting in my in my native Dutch uh, language. Uh, Kick achter ja, Colonel Washington. Something like that. So one of my favorite lines that we've already filmed is when I'm escaping, myself and Van Brom are escaping from prison, and uh, Van Brom is like, you know, he's all mad and like scared, and he's like, these we're being chased by French guards, and he's like, if they catch us, they're gonna kill us, and I'm like, I, but they have to catch us first, you know, and I love that line because that's the embodiment of Stobo. He's like, yeah, but they haven't caught us yet, you know. He's like, let's go, let's do this, you know. And uh, so I just, I love that line because um, I just think that's who that guy is. You know, that's interesting because I have such a, a deep, heavy East Texas accent and, and this, this character has a British accent and that's something I've never done before. And so uh, having to learn the received pronunciation and, and how to talk in that manner. And it's, um, you know, they say things like that and we have been in rain all night. Our powder may be wet and Bessie may not be in the mood to pop off this morning. You know, so that, you know, doing something like that is a, a stretch for a guy like me. Tu n'es pas encore mort, mon père, after the half king killed Jumonville. Um, and he would just, with all the rage, you know, you're not dead yet. And spits on him, you're not dead yet, because the French had did him wrong. And uh, starts scalping him that even uh, young George Washington was, uh, you know, a little disgusted, a little, a little, I don't want to say frightened by that sight, the bloody sight, and uh, turned away. So uh, that's that's pretty much it. I mean, I yell it throughout the scene, uh, throughout the battle, you know. But there's a, a, a grudge and, and revenge feel of uh, the half king towards the French and what they did to his tribe and to him. All right. So in the last shoot, like I got to play a little. I got a little tipsy. But he comes out and he's like almost like a very, you know, braveheart esque. He's like, by the water of King George, General Braddock sets out to the British man of war. Jim Terry, the ride the Capes of Virginia in February, you know, and he goes through the whole speech. I don't want to give it away, but there's so much more. And then he smells out a Frenchman and he just goes off, man. So there's a little General Edward Braddock. I love saying General Edward Braddock sets out. Like it's one of my favorite things. And then uh, that's it, man. The commandant has uh, the uh, demanding priorities, Major. Did you think you were the only ones who were vying for his attention? But I am certain that he will return soon. <laughs> Baguette. <laughs> in the pilot, which will be in this Washington's journey, the, the first segment of Washington's armor, um, man, walking up to the Allegheny River when it's, you know, half froze and I'm talking to Christopher Giss and he's telling me all the many reasons why this is a terrible idea. Um, and in true George Washington fashion, I get to look at the river and say, you know, he's saying, we're not, we don't, we're not going to do this. We can't do this because we can't do this because, and I essentially say back a bunch of stuff, but that I finish with, so cross we shall and without delay, um, just like. Come on, man. That's like a. That is a great line, and I said it really well. So. <laughs> yeah. So just think of a loud, icy river, right? And I'm next to a wee little man named Christopher Guest, who's. We shouldn't do it because this, and we shouldn't do it because that, and I say, cross we shall, and without delay. <laughs>